Hey everybody, welcome to Talk Daily. My name is Eddie and today we're going to be talking about a vehicle that I really, 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 really adore and like. This is all about form, form following function. And this is the Ineos Grenadier. And before I go any further, this has come to us from Auto Week and written by Mr. Mark Vangen. And um, I, this is dated January 27, 2022. And if you never heard of the Ineos Grenadier, but you heard the word Ineos is Ineos because Ineos is a petroleum company and is founded by Mr. Well, Sir Jim Ratcherfield. And he's the founder and the chairman of Ineos Petroleum. And they're humongous, humongously su successful um, oil uh, company. Um, anyway, uh, we're very lucky that he, one day, according uh, 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 to Auto Week, um, the story behind uh the design and the idea came from him at one point sitting in a pub, a bar, and having a couple of drinks, and he came up with the idea. Whether that story is true or not, it romanticizes the idea. I like it. I like it. And um, it, that's nice. A lot of people get ideas, you know, at, um, you know, not every idea comes in when you're sitting down trying to force it out. Sometimes it just happens, and this is one of them. So you might say, okay, idea, what's so special about it? Okay, well, I'll read from the title for you. It says BMW straight six. We know how good these things are. ZF8 speed. Three differentials. And then just the power terrain. And um, this is very capable. This is very capable. It says the Ineos Grenadier's off-road focus vehicle originally conceived on the back of a cocktail napkin. Again, I keep saying that. And largely promoted by the departure of the classic Land Rover Defender. Those are very big shoes to fill. If you don't know what a Land Rover Defender Google it. It's pretty much the vehicle to go off-roading in. Um, the rugged off-roader will have 3.0 liter straight 6 BMW turbo, ZF8 speed, and three differential, two electronically locking and one manually locking via a transfer lever. You don't see those anymore, do you? Uh, the Ineos Grenadier SUV is coming in summer 2023 with pricing in the upper reach of the Bronco Wrangler and the 4Runner. And before they say anything that, oh yeah, we have the Bronco, Raptor, the Wrangler, and the 4Runner. No, we, no. None of them will compete with this vehicle. None of them will. Because, and I'll, before you go in the comments and tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Remember, all these vehicles designed to do what? On the freeway. Even Ford, Ford, even Ford, they, you know, the, the Raptor, they say, okay, Ford engineer sat down and said, you know what, we want to make it go off-road and we also want it to be livable driving it on the freeway speed. And that, again, that's an achievement of its own. I'm not undermining any of these vehicles. They're all capable, all definitely capable. But this, this vehicle is specifically made to go off-road. Everything else fall secondary. Look at the tires. Look at everything about it. It's not designed. This thing is zinc coated chassis. It has zinc coated, and then it's like it has um, powder coated. It, the chassis itself is designed to like resist rust for like, 30, 40 years. I mean, that's when they're making it. That's what they have in their mind. We don't want to have all the creature comfort, but then have this vehicle be able to go off road and last you a long, long time. Um, I mean, if if you look at it, it really looks like a Defender. It's, it's just a wonderful car. And if you, before you talk about, oh, well, how come it doesn't have diesel? It's because, um, and they go on in this article, they mention it. Um, the diesel is, um, it, BMW doesn't have the emissions um, designed for it. And so they don't want to deal with the emission of it. Um, so they're talking, okay, I'm going to quote from the Ineos Automotive uh, U.S. Executive Vice President, Greg Clark. He's the U.S. Uh, Executive Vice President who, uh, who summed this vehicle saying, Sir Jim Ratcherfield, our founder and owner, was pretty frustrated at the fact that not only was a Land Rover Defender going out of production, he was frustrated that there really didn't seem to be any alternative to a really rugged, practical, very capable off-road vehicle that wasn't more on-road focused. And so really... He made the decision subsequently to say, okay, I have the means and I think there is an entrepreneur market gap here. I'm going to set up my automotive division to help fill that gap and serve these customers that have been progressively underserved by a variety of different manufacturers who have, for whatever reason, moved into different spaces and tried to appeal to different customer group. Um, so basically, there's a really hardcore off-road community and that's what he's trying to appeal to, Okay. Um, so after years of seeing photos of the Grenadier on January 25th, Ineos brought a hand-built prototype to its first U.S. spec Grenadier to Los Angeles. 
LA and showed it around to a few interested parties. I bet you these guys are definitely are um, maybe stakeholders or people in the company. The first stop is a sort of cross country tour. The idea was to reassure not only us in the press, but also those 3000 reservation holder that the big UT really is coming out, specifically the, the new on sale date, summer of 2023. Um, so they keep talking about it. You say nothing to complain about what we were allowed to be very carefully look at the delicate hand built prototype. Journalists in South Africa were given grenadier right through the bush. Okay, I don't know, he's complaining. Uh, the full uh, technical spec will be announced in April, Clark said, but he did not give few specification for the BMW straight six turbo, 280 horsepower, 234 pound of torque, made it to the ZF eight speed automatic. It resembled a powertrain that you'll find a BM BMW X5, but it is tailored, calibrated, and developed to just for us in our application. Clark said uh, we lose some horsepower intentionally to gain some torque and that is the uh, that is better or best. Uh, I mean, that's how it should be. Uh, alas, in our opinion, for low speed off-road situation where you need more torque than you do horsepower. I totally agree. Torque is where it's at. It's definitely had to do with torque. He goes, other market around the world still have the option of a uh, straight six diesel, but not us. And this is what I'm trying to get to I'm talking about the BMW. And again, these are our quotes. BMW no longer does the emission certification for their six-cylinder diesel. They have pulled those from the market, so that makes it pretty much impossible for us to bring that diesel power terrain here. Um, the the Grandier ride on a super rigid box ladder flame that's been zinc coated and powder coated. We want this car to last 30, 40, 50 years, Clark said. I mean, these are like big, big, big promises and... Um, Good for them. Good for them. Solid beam axle, sit front and rear made made by Grenadier partner involved in uh, agricultural machine. That gives you an idea of, the, you know, the level of strength uh, and uh, design they're looking for. There will be three differentials. The front rear diff will offer electronic locking and the center diff will be controlled manually through a separated shift lever. As God intended. You know what? I can see the BMW shifter right here. Yeah, you know what? That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to unlock them and lock them when you need to go. Um, it really looks very agricultural, this vehicle. It, all, it almost looks like a trailer inside, a tractor trailer. I mean, I'm just saying like the boxiness of it. But again, this is a prototype. And there's a picture of it. The Grenadier will have the usual electronics, but with half as many ECUs. Good. Don't know how they're going to do that or how it will help reliability. Um, redundancy is definitely a form of reliability, but I, I look at these vehicles and you just want them to be raw. You want this vehicle to be raw because it's going to be used and abused and people are going to step in it in their boots and going to be mud and snow and God knows what. And you want this vehicle to start and work no matter what. And the more electronics, like the other story I did with the Nissan with the wiring rubbing and the connector and all that silly stuff that will come and bite you like 10 years from down the line, you have to do a recall. That's why I mean what I like to see less electronic, not in the sense that no, nobody nowadays wants to get a car with no Bluetooth or Apple Play or whatnot. But this is not the car that I want to have level three autonomy. I don't, I don't want a car to park itself. You know, I, we don't need that with this car. You know, if I, I like the fact that when you get this car, it's almost a certification to you as a person saying, I want to go off road and I know how to use this car. Believe it or not, off-roading is not very intuitive. You know, you, you could have a driver license that tells you know how to drive a car, but you put that person in an off-road vehicle and he could literally flip that car going traversing through some terrain that has holes. I mean, he, he can even, the individual could drive that vehicle into a, a water puddle. You heard about this for sure, you know, and you don't know how deep the water is, right? So it, it takes skills. And I, I like that. Uh, I like the fact that you need to learn and, and get educated. You know, and this is the machine that can carry you along to your journey of discovering how to drive in the in the wild. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, again, that's another quote saying you will, of course, have all 21st century expectation. There will be heated seat. There will be wireless Apple CarPlay. There'll be Android Auto. We don't have an onboard navigation system, but we have that to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which I think is pretty because nowadays. Absolutely. I totally agree. You really don't need navigation screen. You have your phone. And probably when you have that car, you probably have your satellite phone. The Grenadier is also designed to be aftermarket friendly with a lot of pre-wiring for, for winches, LED lightning, exterior power takeoff, and that kind of stuff. You know, again, it's focused. I love it. I love it. We've done a lot of uh, uh, 
primarily because it's very easy for us to do it in the manufacturing. It's very difficult to do it after the fact if you're dropping head, headliner, if you cut through bulkheads, splicing to wiring harness, that kind of thing. That's that's good to see. If I'm 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 a kind of person I like to modify my vehicle and having a manufacturer saying, okay, you know, I gave you the space to do it. Toyota did that with their vehicle. They do that with the Supra. They did that with the FRS, uh, the BRZ, etc. It's good to see when manufacturers know that their customer the, they are familiar with their customers and they uh, they're um, catering to them. Okay, so uh, then goes saying Clark said the rig will have 50% fewer ECU than uh, than the competition. The goal to bring less likely electrical stuff going wrong. Man, you just got exactly out of my words. Why do the Brits drink warm beer, etc.? What? What? Okay, he's, I don't know what that what is. I'm sorry, I read that. That makes no sense. One of the interior choices can be uh, hosed out. Another is leather. There will be safety features like automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, eight airbags, and many more. Uh, I believe a lot of these things, uh, not because they want to have them, is because it's becoming mandatory uh, or it's becoming mandatory down the line and might as well engineer them right now than have them in, as an add-on, etc. Uh, full spec will be announced in April. Uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll be expanding uh, the, config the configurator that we have now, the configurator that we have now, which is kind of more of a visuali visualizer a bit of a teaser where I allow people to configure in different colors with some of the different options that are available. Then in April, we add all the different product features and accessories. Okay, that, that creating a, I mean, I see that, you know, don't, it, it, the suspense, right? What's inside of the toy, what's inside of the box. They're creating that, that's good for them, as they should. Expect to see actual dynamic pre-production prototype by the fourth quarter of this year. At which point we'll be certainly running a regional media drive and also getting our customers and uh, a customer in waiting effectively into the vehicle to be so be patient there'll be no prices yet so the uk is uh 48 pounds to 49 pounds and the us uh, 64,500, 65,800. i don't think so i think that car is going to be definitely in the 80s when it comes to the united states sorry but i don't i don't see it if the bronco is going to be selling and this is this is this would definitely outperform the Bronco, uh, the, the the stock Bronco. Okay, uh, again, you know what? We don't know. Uh, my assumption is that this vehicle, it will be. All right, watch it. I'm gonna probably eat my words, but I definitely think the stock Bronco and the stock stock Wrangler and the Four Runner TRD Pro. I don't know about Four Runner TRD Pro, but it will be. It will give them a run for their money for sure. And um, if if you dedicate an off roader. That this car, the Ineos, I think will be the one to go. Um, I would say you could expect it in, in the upper reach of Wrangler, Bronco, Forerunner. So, okay, here you go. The upper reaches of Wrangler, Bronco, and Forerunner, said Clark. And then messing around with figure free reaction came up with the following prices and might have been in the upper reaches. So, yeah, that's talking about like, here you go, the 80,000, probably 80,000. Okay, for the 87,000 for loaded Wrangler, 60,000 for loaded four door Bronco, and 58,000 for the other pro with all the trimming. Uh, you can reserve a Grandier right now for only $450. Yay, that's all you need to reserve. It'll be a network of dealer two with 35 to 40 expecting in the United States and 10 in Canada. More to come, uh, more to come on that. Uh, Magna is their principal engineering partner. All vehicle will be made in the former Daimler plant in Hambach, France, uh, just over the German border. Oh, wait, I don't understand the statement. Someone explain it to me. Uh, it's made in France, just over the... Oh, yeah, just over the German, but I'm thinking I'm in Germany. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, but the most interesting thing Clark may have said during the walk around was there will be more than just this Grenadier. It's uh, subsequently become an organization and all, not only launching vehicle, but it's actually building our global car company from scratch, said Clark. So this is a 10-figure billion dollar plus investment for our owner, but it will be the beginning of an automotive brand that will specialize, quite focused, and niche will have grenadier variant of grenadier and uh, and derivative thereof and also subsequent vehicle line that will be pro, uh, produced probably in our manufacturing facility in humbach all that from a cocktail napkin that's man how many cocktail napkin you drew on and became the reality i hope many just like uh here but anyways um let me know what you think in the comments below if you uh, if you like it, anticipate it, or anything. We already have plenty of these kind of vehicles in the market. Uh, I think this car is going to be a designated off-roader. Uh, I like the way it looks. I like it just really function. You see it. It looks something retro from the 70s, 80s. Uh, it has vibes of the Defender. It has vibes of the, the Toyota. 
uh, Land Cruiser and all those cars that, you know, you you could see this car in the safari. You could see it surrounded by giraffes and, and elephants and tigers jumping on it. It just, um, I love it. It's form over function. I definitely don't think, I don't want to drive this car at doing 70 miles an hour on the freeway and, you know, um, being stuck in a traffic jam. Although it's capable of doing uh, but definitely I can see about extra fuel tanks and whatnot on the top. It is an adventure vehicle. I love it. And to me, this is kind of the same way I love Tesla. When you see Tesla and you're like, this guy just came up with an idea. And this is the same thing. Um, it's an idea, but I like it because it's really, um, it has a lot of soul, has a lot of character and it's purpose built. There's nothing more pretty. I mean, the reason we are attracted to, if you're a car person, you're attracted to cars, you probably attract them because of the way they look, or maybe attract them because of what they stand for, what does, what's their function. And that's the same attraction I have toward this vehicle. And it's all about the function of this car, what it could do, you know, and what you can do with it and the places it could take you to. Whether you are have the means to go out there or you are able to do it, this car can do it. It's like having a very good sushi knife. Are you good? Maybe, are you gonna make very good sushi? Who knows? Maybe, yeah. Maybe you have the chance, but you have it, and I, that's the reason I love this car. It, it, it stirs imagination. And look, there's a picture of it, like look like in the background, the trees. It looks somewhat like Outer Cali, but anyways, um, good for them. And uh, if you know someone who reserved it or wants to reserve it, let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you think of it. If you did you hear about it, did you know this existed? And if so, let us also know. As always, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, my name is Eddie. As always, uh, be safe out there and take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.